This is Jonathan Agam here for Pro Boxing Fans. Delighted to be joined by the savage Alan Babbitt on the fight right now. Well, it's an amazing fight. And uh, I was just looking, I look every, everywhere for that fight uh, to read something about it. And I see most of the people give, give Fury a chance, give Fury an edge. And that surprised me really because Joshua is the, you know, the champion. I don't know what I mean. Fury is a champion, no matter, but Joshua is the perfect kind of boxer. You know, he's Rocky. You know, so not Rocky. I said wrong. He's Apollo Creed, but Fury is Rocky. You know, Fury is Rocky, and people just love him. You know, and he loves them back. And I think he's different. I think he's different breed of a fighter like me. But I'm not in that category, of course. But I think he's different, and that his awkwardness and that different boxing is gonna win. You know, I would also put it on Fury. Although if I had to put like a million pounds. I would maybe put him on Joshua. Maybe the, maybe it is a safer bet. Because Joshua, you know what you're going to get. With Fury, you never know. Maybe he doesn't even show up for the fight. You know, so safer bet is Joshua, but I think everybody goes with Fury. You know? Do you think do you think Fury, if he is... If, sorry, do you think if Joshua is to win, do you think he needs a knockout? Well... That that's also in the judges. It can be a very awkward fight because if if it goes all rounds, it's gonna be so. Can you just imagine that judge, poor judge, had to? Joshua is kind of technically better, but Fury is a better boxer. But I don't know, you know. It's it's that's why it's so important. That's why it's so it attracted so many attention you know, because you don't know what you're gonna get. I think it's gonna be a knockout, you know, but. I can see Joshua knocking out Fury before Fury knocks out Joshua. So, and I can also see Fury just making it so awkward and gypsy fight, you know, getting him into that gypsy fight. And I don't think Joshua can hold that. So, it's a lot of questions, you know. And what about Alan Babich on the undercard? Oh, God. Music to my ears. Uh, to, uh, then have some have, have some fans there, you know, have some have my savage on, you know. I think I'm gonna break down and cry because all of you guys are part of my story. If you didn't support me, I would be nowhere. You know, I would just do that fight with Chandel and go home. That's why I, I need your help and you gave it every time. You know, yes, I'm so so grateful. I'm nowhere without my savage army, you know. I know that. I'm not special, I'm just a soldier, you know, I'm just a soldier in the ranks. So I just love the feedback and uh, it's amazing, amazing. I, I actually saw on your Instagram story, I think a few days ago, someone asked, would you ever fight Dillian White? Didn't, he, didn't someone ask you that? No, I will never fight. Why would yeah, I fight him? I saw he's someone not... ask you that. Yeah, a lot of people ask me that. A lot, a lot of people. Like, see, when I put up Q&A, there's a dozen of those questions, but I will never fight Dillian White. I love that guy. He did all this for me. Yeah, like I said, you wouldn't be talking right now if you weren't for Dillian White, because in this life it's very tough to just get a chance. I was ten years into boxing, ten years of savage boxing. I was knocking out people everywhere. I had like fifty knockouts in amateurs, <laughs> and mm. nobody heard about me. I was nowhere. I was fucked. Mm. And then Dillian came, he gave me a shot, and I used it. And why? How could I fight him? I would be a terrible human being. Mm. There is so many guys that need spanking, you know. I, I don't need to fight Dillian. I don't want to.